What's up, you guys? I am glad to be back in this chair and back to Cartridge Wars this week after SHOT Show and then, ugh, I got terribly sick. And I've been focused on trying to get my applications in for hunting season this fall. But we're here, back at Cartridge Wars. So today we're talking about the 6.5 millimeter or 264 caliber cartridges. And there are plenty of them. Now, we're going to focus on more of the modern 6.5 millimeter cartridges. Now, the one modern one is the 6.5 Grendel, but it's really more of an AR cartridge. It's, and so we won't talk a ton about that one since we're focused more on hunting and precision rifle. And then there's the old guard. There's the 260 Remington that was a 6.5 Creedmoor before the 6.5 Creedmoor. And then there's the 65 by 55 Swedish Mauser that has been very, very popular in Europe, but never has really taken off uh, in the US, at least in modern times. So we're gonna focus on these because these are the hottest hunting cartridges out there right now. I mean, everybody is going on this 6.5 train. I have my personal re reservations about the 6.5 train. I'm more of a seven guy, but I did pick up this fierce rival in 6.5 PRC. Oh, and man, has it got me excited again about 6.5. This is a heck of a gun. Look at that thing. Um, it is lightweight, carbon stock, carbon barrel, these are available, you can actually get them. Um, man, what a gun. I've, this has kind of got my excitement back up um, for 6.5. And I just love the flat shooting characteristics of that 6.5 PRC. But let's look at the field and see what's before us. So I'm including the 6.5 Creedmoor in this, even though it's been kicked out of Cartridge Wars already, just because you have to compare it to it because it's by far the number one selling. So let's take a look at muzzle velocity. So the 6.5 Creedmoor is down here pretty low, around 2,700 feet per second. Then we see another big jump where the 6.5 PRC, 264 Win Mag, and the 6.5 Weatherby RPM really bump up quite a bit in the speed department. And I'm being a little bit too conservative here on the 264 Win Mag. We could probably get another 40 feet per second out of that to be comparable. I mean, you could hot rod it a lot more, but we could probably get another 40 out of that to be uh, kind of a normal number. Then we get the big guys, the 26 Nosler and the 65300 Weatherby. These guys are shooting over 3,000 feet per second, and these numbers are looking at a 140 grain bullet. A lot of people are gonna throw a 127 grain Barnes LRX in there. And these two cartridges could be in the 3300 category. I mean, they are absolutely blazing stuff out of the barrel here. And there are problems to that ballistically and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But man, are they fast. So let's see what that would look like now um, at 200 yards. So these are in the gray. These would be the feet per second that we'd hit at 200 yards. Everything is way over 2,000, which we would need to uh, kill cleanly and have that bullet expand. The energy, everything has a lot of energy out to 200 yards. The difference in drop is negligible at 200 yards. Now, I ran wind drift at 20 miles per hour. Everybody seems to run wind drift at 10 miles an hour. A 10 mile an hour wind, I mean, yes, we need to, to compensate for it, surely, but I'm more concerned about when you're hunting in a major wind. Um, and suddenly it's a very difficult call, even at 200 yards. So I ran this at 20 miles per hour. Um, and even there, I mean, we're talking about three, four inches. Uh, these 6.5 cartridges shooting a sleek 140 grain bullet. I think I ran this with a Burger VLD or a Burger Elite Hunter. Um, and man, there's just very little wind drift, even a 20 mile an hour wind. Okay, but now let's look at 500 yards. So this one is interesting. That 6.5 Creedmoor, even at 500 yards, still retains 2,000 feet per second. And so that bullet is probably going to expand with most bullet designs, even at 500 yards. 
Um, so on paper, man, the 6.5 Creedmoor looks pretty capable as a hunting round. And everything else is going to be, you know, even well above that. Energy-wise, though, the 6.5 Creedmoor is starting to slow down. Only 1,200 foot-pounds of energy. The 6.5 PRC, 1,500 foot-pounds of energy. Clear out to 500 yards. That's impressive. Um, and it goes up from there. Drop. Here, the 6.5 Creedmoor is down quite a bit. Everything else is pretty close. I mean, we're within five inches. Difference in wind deflection. I mean, all these are within two inches of each other at 500 yards, except for that Creedmoor that starts to really get blown around. Now, uh, when we're talking about wind drift uh, or wind deflection, if we want to be real exact, really, it, the only thing that matters is the BC of the bullet or the aerodynamics, we'll say, of the bullet and how much time that bullet is in the air. And so even though all of these are shooting the exact same bullet here, because the Creedmoor is flying slower, it has more time in the air for the wind to affect it. And that's why we see a pretty big difference in the wind drift there. Recoil energy. Now, really the reason, this is why the 6.5 Creedmoor is famous. It really is like, here it is. This is the reason the 6.5 Creedmoor is famous because it has very little recoil, very little recoil, while having, you know, shooting pretty high BC bullets in 6.5 uh, millimeter caliber. And it's, it can hunt. That's why it's famous. That's why everybody likes it. For a lot of people, you know, they've been shooting 30-06 for their whole life, and they pick up, you know, just the average Joe Hunter. They've been shooting 30 out six their whole life. They pick up a 6.5 Creedmoor and it's like, this thing's so light, people are hunting elk with this thing. And they shoot and they can actually spot their impact. And they can see a bullet uh, traveling. And it's just a game changer if you're coming from those heavier calibers. Um, if you've been shooting, you know, a 260 Remington, a 6.5-284, you look at the 6.5 Creedmoor and you're like, where's the invention here? <laughs> Nothing happened. Now, the 6.5 PRC, it's a step up. You'll see the recoil step up for all of these. And again, I was a little conservative on that 264 Win Mag. But look at this. So if you look at the delta here, the difference in recoil between the, the Creedmoor jumping up to the 6.5 PRC level where we're getting just more speed, you know, 250 feet per second faster in the PRC compared to a Creedmoor. Um, and you'll see, consequently, you have more recoil energy, but then you get a lot more recoil energy for very little difference in the speed at distance uh, or, or energy at distance um, when you get up to these real magnum cartridges. These things are shooting so fast, that 26 Nosler and the 65300 Weatherby, they're shooting so fast that you really have to be specific on your bullet choices to make sure the bullet can handle it. If you take a 6.5-300 Weatherby and you shoot, you know, something 50 yards away uh, with a, you know, a 120 grain bullet, we're going 3,300 feet per second, that bullet is going to tear apart at the seams instantly when it hits. And it, you may not get the kind of penetration you want. You may think, oh, I'm about to clobber this thing, and you don't get the kind of result you want. Now, fortunately, that's one of the benefits of being kind of in the Weatherby system. Uh, if you're buying their factory ammo, they're going to sort through that stuff. You know, they've chosen pretty tough bullets. Now, let's talk about some of the kind of practical considerations that those numbers will bring for you. A lot of people are shooting suppressed these days, and so barrel life has become a very important factor. You don't want a 26-inch barrel and then add a suppressor. It's just too unwieldy to be shooting in the woods. So all of these cartridges, except for the Creedmoor and the PRC, they want a 26-inch barrel. Let's talk action length. So almost all of these are long actions. Some exceptions here are the 65300 Weatherby. That's a magnum length. Uh, that's a big old long stack of powder in that thing. Then we have the 65 Creedmoor that's a short action. And then the 65 PRC, let's call it 
shortish action, right? So the case overall length is 2.955 inches, if I remember right. And that is, you know, traditionally a short action cartridge was 2.8 inches. And so marketing for a lot of cartridges, that's kind of crept up what we consider short action still. Um, so 6.5 PRC, I'm gonna call shortish. Let's talk cost. Let's say we want to go with the 6.5 Weatherby RPM. Well, if you love Weatherby rifles, then great. That's, that's a perfect match, right? And they do make excellent rifles. I've never had problems with Weatherby rifles. But that 6.5 Weatherby RPM, the least expensive rifle they make that comes in that cartridge is over 2,000 bucks. I think it's their Weathermark LT. Um, so you're paying two, over $2,000 for the rifle. Then 6.5 Weatherby RPM ammo, I haven't seen for less than a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks for 20. Do the math. That's five dollars a shot. You're just getting bilked every time you pull that trigger. When really you can get the same ballistic performance essentially out of a 6.5 PRC, I just don't see it. I don't see why you would do it. Plus, if you go with the 6.5 PRC, I mean, everybody loads for it. Everybody does. Nosler, Federal, certainly Hornady, everybody loads for 6.5 PRC now. And so you have a lot of different manufacturers to choose from competing for that. That's why we see 308 win right now is crazy cheap. It, it's half the price of anything else because there's competition there. And then you look at the rifles. Well, you can get a sweet rifle in 6.5 PRC a lot cheaper than you can the Weatherby RPM because Everybody makes 6.5 PRC rifles right now. And so I personally, I just don't get it. Um, I don't see why you would choose it over the 6.5 PRC. Again, it's a great cartridge and I really like Weatherby. Their rifles are awesome. Um, it's a good company, good people there. Everybody I've had contact with is great. But right now, I just can't see it. And it's not like this is a blip in the radar. It's been two years at this point. But this is up to you guys. The 6.5 Creedmoor is kicked out of the competition, but these are the ones that uh, are available for you guys to vote on to see who goes into the finals of Cartridge Wars. This is the last of the semifinals, and then we'll go just down to two rounds. So uh, vote on down in the description, and we'll see you guys in the next video.